Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now, this afternoon edition on Monday, July 27th. We have everything you need to know to get you all filled in on what's happening here in Northeast Ohio from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. First up, we're going to let you know about the new COVID-19 numbers from the Ohio Department of Health. And then we're going to talk about holiday shopping changes, which we already know about, which is absolutely wild. There's another business requiring masks nationwide. This one, though, is a gym, and they're doing something a little bit different than we've seen before. We've also got some new jobs coming to Northeast Ohio, which will also mean better shipment for some of the things that you have been ordering online, which a lot of us have been doing. We're going to talk about the first signs of football coming back to Cleveland and a very sweet story about two guys in Minnesota, a 57 Chevy pickup truck, and 75 bucks. That's gonna leave you feeling pretty good at the end of this. First up, we're gonna start off talking about those new COVID-19 numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. Now, we had some good news over the weekend. Today, however, we have some tough news getting back to Monday here. COVID-19 case numbers are back in the thousands today with those new, duly, new daily reported numbers. And we've also got a high number of deaths again reported today after one day this weekend when we had zero new deaths reported. So let's get into the specifics of that. In the last 24 hours, there have been 1,104 new reported cases of COVID-19, bringing the total here in Ohio to now 85,177. That is dating all the way back to March 9th when we first learned of COVID-19 being in Ohio. Also, though, keep in mind that Dr. Amy Acton, who was our director of the Ohio Department of Health, did tell us that antibody testing shows that we likely had COVID-19 in Ohio as early as January. Our daily percent positive rate is 6.2%. That's the most up-to-date data that is reporting from two days ago. So that means for every test that's been given for COVID-19, 6.2% of them are coming back positive. That's the same as our seven day average, by the way, but we are still above the 5% threshold that is recommended by the World Health Organization. So more tests are being done, but more tests are coming back positive. In the last 24 hours, there have also been 37 new deaths reported in the state of Ohio related to COVID-19, bringing that total up to 3,307, dating all the way back to March 9th. Yesterday, we saw 10 new deaths reported. On Saturday, great news that there were zero new deaths reported, but on Friday, there was another high number with 41 new deaths reported. So we're seeing more of the same with those daily reported death numbers really bouncing kind of all over the place. The total number of hospitalizations reported in the last 24 hours is also up. We saw 86 new hospitalizations confirmed today from the Ohio Department of Health, bringing the total number of people who have been hospitalized now to 10,285. And today, there are 1,110 people who are currently hospitalized. That's about 10.8% of all of the people who have been hospitalized, and that number is increased from yesterday. The total number of people who are in the ICU who have been in the ICU since we learned of COVID-19 is 2,466 with 22 new ICU admissions reported in the last 24 hours and 356 people currently in the ICU. Now that number has stayed steady over the last three days. That doesn't mean there haven't been changes as we just saw. There have been 22 new reported ICU cases in the last 24 hours. So people are being admitted, people are being let out of the ICU. And so over the past three days, we have seen a steady total of 356 people each day in the ICU. That's, a, that's according to the totals that are up on the Ohio Department of Health website right now. So if you look at the number of people in the ICU right now, that 356, that's about 32% of all of those people who are hospitalized, those 1,110 people who are hospitalized right now. Let's also take a look at the national and the global numbers for COVID-19. Here in the U.S., we are almost at 4.3 million cases of COVID-19. That exact number is 4,262,674. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. The total number of deaths in the U.S. is now almost 150,000. That number is 147,143. We are holding strong at the percentages that we've seen over the last several weeks. Here in the U.S., we have about 26% of the known global cases and about 23% of the known global deaths related to COVID-19. Globally, 
There are now more than 16.3 million known cases of COVID-19. That exact number is 16,330,977. And the total number of deaths globally related to COVID-19 is now 650,029. And that is a lot of people who we have lost related to COVID-19. Of course, we are thinking of all of those people and all of those families and all of those communities affected. Something we, we are learning will be affected by COVID-19 here in the U.S. is also holiday shopping. And it's kind of odd to be talking about this on July 27th, but Target just announced that they will not be open on Thanksgiving Day for the first time since 2011 when they started opening on Thanksgiving Day. Walmart actually announced last week that they won't be open on Thanksgiving Day either. So people who like to get that early kickoff to that Black Friday shopping will not be able to do that physically in stores at Target and Walmart this year. Now, Thanksgiving Day sales are actually not even in the top 10 busiest days for shopping. And even with shopping happening on Thanksgiving Day, Black Friday is still the year's biggest or second biggest shopping day. So it's not exactly clear that this will affect the bottom line for these stores, but they are saying because of safety concerns, they will be closed on Thanksgiving Day this year. Now, Macy's has also said that they'll be pivoting their Black Friday deals more towards online and that we can expect from Macy's to see their holiday shopping specials really in full force right after Halloween. So I know we don't normally get much of a break after Halloween. Before we get into the holiday spirit, we see a lot of that. Even before Halloween, by the way, we'll see things for Thanksgiving and Christmas on the shelves in stores and advertisements for those. Macy's is saying we're going to see it right after Halloween. There's going to be no wait there so that they can have events that are more spaced out, less customers in the store at the same time. Something else Target is doing, which is something that a lot of business is doing, is they're going to be requiring masks in their stores nationwide starting on August 1st. And the new company that has also announced today that they are doing that is Planet Fitness, which is a gym. And we have several Planet Fitness locations here in Northeast Ohio. So starting on August 1st, you will be required to wear a mask in Planet Fitness. They posted this on Twitter today. They had so many puns in their tweet, which I appreciate very much. I love a good pun. I love a bad pun even more. Here's what they said. We love your faces, all of them, but you have to wear a mask and you can't mask a good workout. So mask up and keep moving, <laughs> making that announcement with a little bit of a joke there. Now, here is the interesting thing about what Planet Fitness is doing. No exceptions. You have to have a mask on for the entire workout. We've seen a lot of gyms requiring masks, but saying that you can take them off while you're working out. If you're six feet away from people, not so at Planet Fitness. Also, no exceptions for people with medical conditions. They're saying that if you have a medical condition or if you prefer just not to go to the gym while masks are required, you could just have your membership frozen. So they'll freeze that membership for you. They're saying they're doing this because this will help them stay open so they don't have to close down related to COVID-19. And if you come to the gym, you plan to work out and you just don't happen to have your mask with you, they will have masks available on site. They are not the first company to do this. Like we said, Target's going to be starting doing this on August 1st. Some other companies that are also requiring masks nationwide, Apple, Best Buy, Costco, Starbucks, McDonald's. We see a trend here. Here's something pretty cool that's happening here in Northeast Ohio. Amazon is opening three new delivery stations. And with that, we are expecting hundreds of new jobs in the Northeast Ohio area. So these new locations will be in Cleveland, Bedford Heights, and Glen Willow. So they're expecting this will speed up deliveries for customers in the Cleveland area, which if you've been doing a lot of ordering on Amazon, you know there have been delays. I have definitely experienced that. So the idea of getting things more quickly sounds pretty great. These new jobs that will be available as well will be at a minimum of $15 an hour. And some of those jobs will also include Amazon Flex delivery drivers. This is like Uber for Amazon. These workers make deliveries, they use their own vehicles and they use their own schedules. So those are some of the jobs that will be available when these new delivery stations open in Northeast Ohio. Now we don't know exactly when those opening dates are, but we do expect it to be by the end of the year. And tomorrow we expect Cleveland Browns 2020 training camp to kick off, sort of. 
Players will be reporting to Berea, which is where the Cleveland Browns headquarters campus is, but it's going to be a little bit before they actually start practicing football. This is all according to a memo obtained by Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network. So this week, what we can expect to see is COVID-19 testing and virtual meetings. They are expected to have three days of testing on COVID-19 this week. There'll be one day when they're not expected to be tested according to that memo. Next week is when we'll see the players moving into the weight room and on field conditionings. Next week, the only people who will be allowed to use and touch the footballs include the quarterbacks, the receivers, the punters, the kickers, and the long snappers. Now, after that, there's going to be time limits on walking through plays, practicing with pads and that sort of thing. There will be no helmets at practice, according to this memo, until August 12th, and then things will sort of ramp up from there. One thing that we do know is there are not expected to be any fans allowed at training camp. The NFL hasn't said yet what they're planning on doing with fans at games. We know there are no fans at Major League Baseball games. We know there are no fans at the NBA games that are coming up. NFL hasn't said just yet what they're planning on doing when it comes to fans at games, but the Cleveland Browns did email season ticket holders and said that it would not be likely that they would be able to have full capacity at First Energy Stadium. They had sent out surveys asking season ticket holders if they were willing to change their seats, what their comfort level was with wearing a mask in the stadium, and what their concerns were with coming back to the stadium. So. We'll have to wait and see exactly what NFL's plan is when it comes to fans. Assuming that the, the actual season is able to kick off, which is scheduled for September 10th, which let's hope. Let's hope everything continues to go well with Major League Baseball, everything continues to go well with the NFL, or the NBA, excuse me, and then we can see an NFL season starting September 10th. We already know there's no preseason, but we're learning a little bit more about how they'll be training leading up to when the season is supposed to start on September 10th. Okay, we're going to end things on the right note for you here. We're going to tell you about a Minnesota man who paid $75 for a Chevy pickup truck 44 years ago, and now he sold it back to someone who has been waiting for that truck for a really long time. The man's name is Bob Sportle, and he bought this 57 Chevy pickup truck in his early 20s from a retiring farmer named John Vanderveen, who is no longer with us today. Bob said that he tried to get the price down at the time to $50, but that John Vanderveen, he stuck with it and he got the $75 out of the truck. And then Bob drove that truck to work for 38 years. He was driving it on the day that he retired and then some, he drove it even past that point. Bob said it kept going, so he just kept driving it. I mean, that says all, all you need to hear right there. You know, why uh, fix what's not broken, right? Well, there's duct tape on the seat holding it together now. There are rust holes on the sides of the van, but the truck, not the van, there are rust holes on the sides of that truck, but it meant something very special to a man named Tom Leenstra, who is the grandson of the late John Vanderveen. So apparently Tom has been bugging Bob to sell him back this truck for a very long time. Tom finally gave in, or John, Bob finally, well, I'm just, I'm all over the place with these names, you guys, okay? Bob owned the truck, he sold it back to Tom, who is the grandson, and Tom says today, it's like riding with his grandpa again. So, everyone is very happy, and you know who else is very happy is Bob's wife, who said she's been waiting to get that truck out of the garage for a long time. So, more room in the garage, Tom has his grandpa's truck back, and he bought it for $75, which is the exact price that Bob paid for it so many years ago. Pretty great story. We want to know what is making you feel good. We want you to show us something good. You can do that in the WKYC app, and then we will use your best photos and your short videos on the air at 5 p.m. in our What's New TV show because we want to start your Monday off on a right foot. So let us know what's making you feel good. Show us something good. Send that to us in the WKYC app using the Near Me feature. E very easy to do. Just tap on Near Me, tap on Share With Us, submit it to it, and then we've got it. That's it for your three news now afternoon update on Monday, July 27th. I'll see you at 5 p.m. on What's New with your trending stories. This is Stephanie Haney.